the title's a little bit different than you saw in your program, but I assure you that the subject matter is not. All of you have seen a lot of fruit drop this year. And the drop is more obvious on trees that have some stage of decline symptoms rather than those that appear healthy. And we all know many of those apparently healthy trees uh, already have HLB. Everybody has heard and seen that we have very high fruit drop this year. It appears to be mostly on weaker tree or heavier on weaker trees. Uh, NAS, National Ag Statistical Service, uh, old timers think of it as a Florida Ag Statistical Service. They've had to reduce their crop estimates 10% during the harvest season. We're all assuming this is primarily due to HLB, but we don't really have extensive tests verifying that the trees with heavy drop only have HLB. Now, pre-harvest drop is not an un unknown phenomenon. It happens every year. Uh, NAS calculates an average fruit drop into their calculations uh, when they take their sampling. Uh, but they've reported that this was the worst year since 6970. And my guess is by now that it's the worst year uh, that we've ever seen. A little bit about previous behavior and uh, maybe climate effects that alter how much pre-harvest drop we normally have or have had in the past. Uh, I was able to get uh, six, seven years of uh, Florida Ag Statistical Service data some time ago, did some evaluation and recently looked at potential weather effects. And then I'll give you some perspective on what I'm seeing this year. So for the, their data, for early mids, primarily hamlets, these are uh, six years. And you can see that at the beginning of the normal harvest season for processing, the, the drop has or was for these years, four to 10%. And by November, it had increased to nine to 16. For Valencia's, it was 10 to 20% in February and up to 16 to 24% by April. Now, obviously you could see there was quite a difference at the beginning of harvest, but almost all of the lines were parallel indicating a st steady drop rate of about 3% per month during the harvest season, not a rapid increase. And two of those years, the losses were quite a bit higher, and in two of the years, they were consistently lower for both cultivars, and two of those years were irregular in terms of their behavior. So we need more data to analyze, and we need this background of why we have pre-harvest drop as a baseline to understand this additional drop related to HLB. Here's an evaluation of the high years, including 6970 that are in orange and uh, two years that had low drop in blue. I looked at mean temperatures for spring and fall and bloom dates from our bloom monitoring system 
it appears that the years with high drop rates were early bloom and had a, a higher than uh, average temperature in October compared to the low drop years. So that's a start for an evaluation. I have permission from NAS to get their complete database that we can put against our weather database and evaluate it. What about 1213? A lot of drop in a lot of blocks. Very briefly, the October estimate was 154 million boxes of oranges and 20,300,000 grapefruit. By March, those numbers were decreased so that we had a 7 million lo uh, box loss for early mids, 8 million for Valencia's, and 3 million for grapefruit. Their calculated drop rates expected in October, you can see, the, I'll just go down the uh, early mids. They figured it was going to be 12%, turned out to be 18% which was a 50% increase. Fruit size, you've heard that fruit, reduced fruit size was also involved in loss. They were expecting 258 fruit per box, turned out to be 274, but that's only about a 6% change. My math may be a little fuzzy on what I did here, but it appears that for early mids, it was an 87% of the change was due to drop and the other to fruit size. Now, if you take the 7 million, you multiply it by this percentage, you come to 5.6, did it for all of these. So we have a, about a $52 million loss on early mids, 72, 73, 13 million on grapefruit or as of March, $138 million loss to the industry due to the excessive drop. Somebody may run the numbers and get a little bit different, but I think this is the ballpark we're talking about of how serious economically this loss is. We haven't had experience with HLB. Brazil, up till now, in good management have been removing declining trees, so they haven't seen it. They have a lot of blocks that don't receive this, but nobody wants to talk about those either. So this may be the first year we've had significant numbers of HLB declining trees under our maintenance program that we're trying to maintain. Just another example of the drop. Here's some grapefruit in the river, uh, interior a little bit, outside rows where most of the decline is a uh, severe drop this year. We've looked in some different locations. Uh, I've showed this data in January. Uh, here's some Central Ridge locations. Decline trees always have higher drop rates but I want you to notice the one location, Haines City 2, is relatively low. And at that time, the Valencias weren't too bad. I'll come back to this, that not all blocks have heavy drop. All right. Uh, more recently, we've, we've been following some Valen uh, Valencia, and in block A, you can see through uh, early February, the drop wasn't too bad. In block B, it was relatively okay uh, in January, but by the end of February, it had become very heavy on both apparent healthy and declined trees. Again, another example where there's quite a bit of variability block to block. 
So it looks like the Lynch's are uh, accelerating in their drop. Remember, that's not the way pre-harvest normally occurred. It's, it's usually fairly uniform through the harvest season with slight increases. It appears that the trees are crashing. So uh, the normal varies year to year. This year is much greater. The drop is in all cultivars. This year, weather-wise, bloom date didn't appear to be an expected high drop year. But of course it is. So um, now, what is going on? Various potential stresses, and I'll come back to that, can lead to ethylene production in the fruit. And that ethylene, over a period of time, triggers the upregulation of enzymes that break down cell walls at the abscission zone, loosening of the abscission zone. Sometimes we try to do it on purpose with chemicals. And so we get breakdown of that and abscission of the fruit and it drops. Now, in relation to HLB, we have a lot of possibilities that may be causing this. Recent emphasis has been on rapid loss of root system under HLB. That in itself may lead to difficulty of getting adequate soil moisture and water stress. It could also result in nutrient up, uh, imbalances. We know there's flow and plugging, presumably retarding carbohydrate movement to the fruit. And, and that deficit may weaken that area leading to ethylene. The bacteria itself has a potential to producing toxins or signals, and those could be triggering ethylene production. With these stresses, the peel may be advancing in senescence. I had a harvester call and tell me he'd seen a couple of blocks without weed control that had very little drop and suspected that maybe there was enough effect of the herbicides on the root system to lead to an additional stress that was uh, contributing to the fruit drop. I happen to have a block that I've been looking at watching near Lake Wales and I went and looked at it more closely. There are several trees with low drop, but I found some with high. So uh, still it's a possibility that even herbicides could be in influenced. Certainly our production practices, how we irrigate if we have water stress might make a big difference in whether we see drop. Here's a fruit that has a little aging appearance around the stem. And this is a tree with a lot of drop. And so I just touched that fruit and it came off of my hand with a clear abscission zone uh, drop. Now, almost all the blocks out there are receiving some enhanced foliar program. But not all blocks have high fruit drop. Does it make a difference what the foliar ingredients are? It, that's one possibility of why some blocks have high drop and others don't. The amount of root loss and possible water stress, and also there's critical hormones like cytokinins that come from the root system, and that could be uh, 
deficient. We know there's a possibility that there's carbohydrate limits to the fruit. And with a heavier crop, uh, that combination may lead to this. And again, we can't dismiss the possibility that the HLB organism is having a direct effect. There have been at least two tests this year looking at 2,4-D, which normally will reduce pre-harvest drop. This is one done near Avon Park. Healthy trees, it's not statistically significant. There's even a little more drop uh, under the 2,4-D trees. Uh, for early decline trees, there was no difference. The report I have for the other test was the same, no effect. However, I think in both cases, the spray was done only once at one concentration. Uh, several applications, the earlier timing particularly, and so forth, maybe there'll be effect, but there's no evidence this year in the two test run that 2,4-D stopped this and maybe against the HLB effects, which are different, perhaps the growth regulators to stop drop just aren't going to work. What I think we need to do, there have been a couple of surveys, uh, four databases I understand, of growers and the foliar nutrient program and so forth. I haven't seen those, so I don't know what other detail, but we, we need to get information from growers, particularly of low and high drop blocks, fairly complete details of production practices, characteristics of the soil rootstock, et cetera, run a statistical analysis and see if we find some relationships that we can immediately inform you of that you might have a chance to do something towards uh, the end of the summer this year for next season. And then those apparent relationships need to go into trials to confirm that in fact they make a difference. We need to look at water stress and carbohydrate deficiency, et cetera, and whether there's low-grade ethylene production in the fruit in relation to HLB. Now, currently, although Dr. Browning said there was a little bit of work on growth regulators and uh, drop, that's not the main focus of that project and has a very narrow focus, not near as broad as this. Uh, there's presumably another proposal being enhanced, but I think it's also going to have a narrow focus. I believe we need to put a lot more time in this. Remember, it's a $140 million problem that I think is with us. Now, I say the funding's not available before 2014. There's a USDA block grant to the Florida Department of Ag, but the funding for that, and we are putting a project in to ask for that, won't be available till January, too late to do anything for next season. Um, I don't have an answer about how we can do very much this year to try to stop this for next year. So with the continual nutritional maintenance of HLB infected trees, we, I'm afraid we should expect to have this problem of excessive fruit drop. Furthermore, with these higher levels of HLB affected trees showing up in the, in the grove, we could also have poor delivered quality for processing and fresh fruit. Thank you. Any questions? Yes.
The, the question was regarding trifoliate as an important base in our rootstocks, and is that causing some, uh, say, winter wintertime uh, dormancy that might be reducing ability for nutrient and water uptake and uh, and so forth. Under Florida conditions and soil temperatures, I, I think it's very unlikely that that's happening. If it does at all, uh, January is our coldest month, and we already this problem was already full blown by by January. Any, uh, yes. Okay, the, the question is, uh, with HLB in Brazil, they still appeared to have a bumper crop. They had an increase in crop relative to recent years, but historically, yields are considerably down. Uh, this, this year, uh, this crop, they're gonna be very low. And the variation in the crop in, in Brazil, just like here, is primarily because of climate and weather. So, uh, and the, uh, the situation in Brazil is artificial because the processors choose to store and dribble out the amount they sell to keep the price high. And this past year with the high crop, it was a high crop because they cho chose not to buy early mid fruit from the small growers and they had maybe 80, uh, as much as 80 million boxes that they couldn't sell. So uh, uh, it's not valid. There was a question right here in front. All right, I'm not sure that in the back you could hear all of that. Uh, first of all, uh, he was saying that he'd, he'd done some of the stop drop treatments. Perhaps this is the other test because he included retain and he saw no effect, which is what I had heard before. Uh, the second question or observation was about the drop and the fact that the stem uh, peduncle near the fruit uh, and the area right around the button is often necrotic. Uh, I would add to that that oftentimes you see decay on the tree 
It looks like stem end diplodia, which invades from a weak button. Uh, I can't make any comments as to what he thinks is the unusual breakdown, except that a lot of fruit is already decaying when it hits the ground, and that may accelerate this breakdown, particularly like diplodia uh, softens the whole fruit, peel and everything, and so it disappears. But uh, it is significant that the stem and the button are uh, breaking down. Uh, that would suggest the idea of low carbohydrates might play a role, but you can't discount the possibility that the bacteria with its toxins could be causing that necrosis also.